Uh, my name is James Shields. By, by way of introduction, uh, I guess some of you are probably expecting a, a younger, better-looking version uh, in terms of Alexi to be to be here today. Uh, in the uh, in the spirit of the theme of the the PyCon event, unfortunately Alexi got COVID, um, so you guys drew the short straw and, and got stuck with me for the next half hour. Um, uh, in terms of what we want to talk about today, well, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, like I said, my name is James Shields. Uh, I've been working at the Bank of America for about five years, uh, over a number of different uh, teams and, and products. Um, we are outside at the stand outside. If you want to come and have a chat with us afterwards, shameless plug, we're always hiring. Uh, and we have a, we're probably one of the bigger Python houses in Dublin. Um, so if you want to come talk to us, by all means do. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, we organised a, a hackathon as part of our uh, uh, back to the office effort. It's not the first one we organised, but it's the first one that we decided we'd build everything from scratch, uh, from the, the hackathon platform and the engine uh, through to what the, what the participants actually, actually built on the day. So hopefully you guys will find it interesting uh, and you might take something out of it that you bring back to your own organizations down the line. So every hackathon has a purpose. Uh, usually, you know, bring some ideas, new product development, make some money, break the next big thing. Uh, it's important to, to understand that purpose at the start of your hackathon and to really get, uh, and to get that out to your, your participants. For us, we had a couple of things that we wanted to, uh, that we wanted to nail down. Number one, we wanted to have an in-person event. This was the first time in, in two and a half years that we had our full teams back together again. Um, we had hired some people in the middle of that uh, that we'd never met, we'd never shaken hands with. Um, and, and we really wanted to, to get those people back into the office you know, and get them uh, back and ingrained in the teams that they were working in. Uh, secondly, uh, because of COVID, you know, those kind of cross-team communications that happen in an office where you know, there's a little bit of chit-chat around the water cooler or people go for coffee or lunch, you know, and discussing problems and finding someone who can help them. They just weren't happening, you know, and you can put all of the, the Zoom meets and, and all the table quizzes that you want to put together, but they, they just weren't happening for us. So again, we want to give people a chance just to, to get out of their day-to-day, -to, -day, to see other people in other teams, how they worked, and maybe just cross-pollinate some, some knowledge. Thirdly, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good point to improve morale. You know, again, coming back from COVID, you know, uh, I know from our team, you know, people were spooked coming in on public transport. Um, people were wondering why they were going back to the office and what was happening. So, you know, there was a, a lot of anxiety and unease, uh, and we wanted to lay that as much as we had, as much as we could. And it was it was really important for us to, you know, to, to have small events like this where, where people could just participate together and get back get used to being back together. Fortunately, in terms of goals, you know, we're still a bank. We still want to make money, add on interest, take off charges, uh, make trades. So we didn't want to take too much of everybody's time. Uh, we wanted to be sure that we could get in, get out in one day uh, and get the benefits of the event. Fifthly, we want to be sure that we could, you know, have a diverse group of people that were going to participate in the hackathon. You know, certainly when, when you say hackathon on, on my team, you know, some people, their eyes glaze over, they visibly get smaller in their chairs, they pray to God that you're not going to pick them for a team, and, and they hope that you'll just breeze by and not mention the hackathon word again. Um, we wanted to, to kind of break through that a little bit, uh, and to be fair, I, 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 guilty, one of those folks. Um, so what we wanted to do is kind of break that, uh, break that habit a little bit and get more people who don't necessarily code day to day, but still you know, are capable of having fun and are capable of communicating with their colleagues, um, and are capable of generating ideas. So we want to bring them into the, into, the, uh, into the cohort of people and into that community of people that we're gonna, uh, that we're gonna take part. And finally, we'll have a bit of fun. You know, like it's, you know, we spend uh, half of our waking hours in work. Yeah, so you know, let's, let's make it at least some of that a little bit of fun. Um, so what did that give us? In terms of format, uh, what we came up with was we'd have a small committed team organising the event, so that was you know, kind of three or four people. One full day, nine to five, away from our kind of day to day, not answering emails, not answering Skype, not on Mattermost. Uh, we ended up having about 20 people all told who had registered for the event. So we had small teams of two, so we didn't want uh, like, uh, we had small teams of two, so we didn't want like big teams where there'd be one dominant voice. Um, and we set up those teams so that they would be, you know, different experience, different levels of experience, different experience within the organisation, 
and you know different capabilities, just so there was a good diversity of people through it. And we chose our tech to be Python. Why Python? It's widespread in our organisation. You know, most people had at least seen it and experienced it. You know, it's a relatively simple language to pick up if you're not day-to-day -day coding, and it's a relatively simple language to read. Um, and there was good experience from our side in terms of just getting stuff set up and getting stuff run, and there was good support through the community. So the next, the next thing that we have to do is come up with a, with a challenge, and that's probably one of the, the harder questions that you'll have when you're organizing a, a hackathon. You know, it's really easy to come down and say, hey, be creative, be innovative. You know, but when, when someone sits you down in front of a laptop and says, be creative and be innovative, the last thing that starts flowing is creative juices. So we want to give teams a, an idea and an idea within the purpose and the goals that we set up in, in terms of what I talked about earlier, that would set them up for success. So the challenge needs to be something that we could implement, that would keep people engaged, um, that was that we could actually put together with a team of three people um, who are still at their day-to-day -day jobs in terms of running the applications within the bank. Uh, and that was solvable by everyone from you know, a junior developer on our grad program straight in off the street to you know, five, ten year seasoned developers who, who knew their way around. It needed to be a, a concept that lived within their space. So something that they could relate to that they were, they were familiar with. Uh, and it needed to give us a, a sense that there was a, a number of different solutions that people could come up with, but not necessarily everyone would come up with the same solution. So, what do we do? Uh, one, one interesting thing that we did was we used uh, uh, Google's GPT-3 AI tool just to come up with a backstory. So we gave it a couple of words, a couple of parameters, uh, and it gave us this. I'm not going to drain that slide, uh, but what it did was it allowed us to, to set up that, uh, that cohort and give them a story and a little bit of marketing more than anything else that would give them a sense as to what they were competing for within the, within the challenge. And if you think about that, um, that participation set of people, that cohort, you know, really what you're doing in that space is you're setting up a little micro community. So as you're, as you're creating your hackathon, you've got to take care of that community and build it like you would any other community. So you know, you've got your people there, you've got that place and you've got how you communicate with them, you know, and you've got to you know, set that up and give them a little bit of marketing and a little bit of support to get, to get into that space. The other thing that we were able to do, which was interesting for us, was you know, as we came back to the office, not everyone was back in the office, so we were able to corral a little piece of the office off and say, this is our hackathon area, and bring those 20 or so people down to that one space and have them in that one space. And what that gave us was, you know, if you think of communities and how they grow in terms of people, place, purpose, and activity, you know, this set up our purpose, we had that place, you know, we marketed it to people, not just through you know, regular emails, but you know, we would have gone through one-to-ones and when, when managers were having conversations, team meetings, and again, it was just about generating that engagement and excitement around the event. So, with all that said, what was the challenge? So, we came up with the trading bot game. You know, relatively familiar to us, being in a bank. You know, each team was responsible for, a, you know, a trading agent, and that agent lived on the engine that we developed. Each agent was given a, you know, a set of resources and a budget that it could use um, and, and a starting set of demands. Uh, and that set of demands was something simple like you need to buy you know, 10,000 of, of X resource or you need to have that at the end of the game. If the demands are satisfied, great, no penalty. If the demands are missed, they get a penalty. Um, and the more you miss, the, the more severe the penalty. And then the final score was essentially the difference between the, the budget that you'd gained through your regular trading activities and any penalties that you'd incurred. And, and the goods are kind of bought and sold on that market, you know, in terms of uh, the individual teams as they traded. Um, what we're looking at here is, you know, the, the different types of, uh, or the different classes of things that people were trading uh, and the, the function that we use, the graph is the function that we use to, uh, to calculate that, um, uh, that penalty when people miss their targets. So that's the challenge. That's how we marketed it, how we got it in, uh, how we got people engaged and interested. Um, what else did we need to do? So first of all, we had to learn from other hackathons that we'd run. Um, 
you know, one, one, one anti-pattern that we bought into in the past was, you know, if you have lots of documentation and lots of stuff to go through, you know, people are going to use that time and not actually get anything hacked. Uh, number two was if you have a complicated interface to deal with in terms of your code line, again, people are going to be struggling with that interface and they're not going to get a lot of stuff hacked. So, so what did the participants get? The participants got a, a single class, you know, which was easy to navigate to their first trade, but then they could iterate over that, over what they've been given, and essentially it was just a type your code here, single, uh, a single bash script to deploy it into the engine, and then run from there. So what it allowed them to do was to, to use that scaffolding to get up and running quickly, to, to get themselves into the hackathon space, and to, to start actually hacking. Uh, and you know, people had their first trades up and running within the, within the first hour of the hackathon, and then they were able to get creative around their trading strategies. So, uh, how did it actually go? Um, first of all, our expectations. You know, we put together the technology in the engine. We, we put a full test suite around it. Um, and bear in mind, this was done by guys who, who did this, you know, while doing their day job, you know, in the background at night, you know, hacking away themselves. Uh, put a full test suite around it, you know, and, and we tested everything, you know, uh, you know trusting that we'd, we'd get a level of garbage from the folks. So, you know, regardless of errors, timeouts, bad data, badly formatted data, you know, we put all those tests together um, and, you know, put some visualizations around it fairly late on in the day, but we put some visualizations around it to, to let them see how they were getting on and how they were doing within the, uh, within the run of the game. Um, and then we let it run and, you know, as, as far as we were, we were concerned, you know, everything looked great. You know, we're a clever bunch of engineers. How hard can it be? Um, we did make a couple of decisions within that. You know, the test was a good idea. The, the iterations and, and the number of games being tested and how we ran those iterations as opposed to going for a fully asynchronous uh, trading model was a good idea. Uh, we did decide we didn't need any source code control. Um, that people would just download the bots from the wiki and go from there. Um, maybe more about that later. Um, and, you know, we, we, we said to ourselves, you know, we're clever guys. Yeah. We've anticipated everything. We've, we've thought about it all. You know, we should just kick back, put the beers in the cooler and get ready. In terms of the reality, it, it may not have matched. Uh, the first thing we noticed was that while teams can, can, we did code for situations when teams would submit an order that they didn't have the, the resource to handle. Um, we didn't code for the situation where teams can submit you know, many small orders that each one individually is within the resource constraint, but when you add them all up, uh, it doesn't really tally up. Um, we did have a couple of good ideas as we ran up to the event, and we may have put in a refactor or two uh, prior, just prior to the event uh, in terms of performance. Um, that may have come back to bite us as well. Um, thirdly, no matter how many times you tell developers, you know, change your team name, make sure that the team name is the one that's, that you've been submitted with, and then submit your code. You know, some people, for whatever reason, just don't listen. So, you know, when and if they submit that, uh, their agent with the wrong team name on it and they break our code, you know, that's, uh, you know that, that causes us a problem. So, so as we ran through these, you know, between the first refactor, the visualizations uh, breaking, and uh, some, of the, some of the coding issues, you know, our, our three organizers are soon suddenly taken up with fixing bugs on the engine. So you have multiple teams, you know, some of them fairly oblivious to the matter, uh, running through their iterations and seeing their bots running beautifully, other guys trying something a little bit more sophisticated and breaking everything around them. The final thing that hit us was, I guess when, when you advertise you're going to run a hackathon, you're probably going to get some hackers. Um, and we did. <laughs> now, now there's ways, ways to deal with hackers. Um, now you can put lots of security around it. Uh, one of the issues was someone wanted to monkey patch the scoring part of the engine. Um, the, the easiest way to prevent that was, was less around security and more about threatening to take away his pizza. So, you know, there, there are ways and means to, to work through these. Uh, the other interesting ones was, while we didn't let people game the system and game the engine, we, we did let them game each other. Um, and that was probably one of the, the more interesting parts. So, uh, one of the teams decided that they would put in uh, the, the maximum integer for their price uh, and try and skew all of the averages if people were going on an average strategy. Um, and if people are dumb enough to buy at that level, 
you know, people are more than happy to sell at it. So as, uh, as we start to see hugely negative uh, results coming back for some teams and hugely positive results coming back for others, uh, we knew that there are probably one or two people who, you know, in a highly regulated environment, probably shouldn't be traders. <laughs> I guess the other thing that we learned was, as uh, and in fairness to the guys, while, while the beers were warming up in the coolers, um, they did get the bugs fixed. Uh, the decision around uh, not pulling back any, or not implementing any source code control did come back to bite us because we had to walk around by hand and, and update everyone's code line so that they could, they could actually uh, take advantage of those, those bug fixes. And like I said, one team wanted to monkey patch the score function, so, you know, uh, the, the, the easy way around that was, you know, you're not getting any pizza, guys. Stay off it. <laughs> so finally, I think one of the things that I, that I do want to cover is, you know, in terms of helpful tips, and, and if you're going to do this in your own organization, there's probably a couple of things to think about. First of all, you know, take your time finding the right problem. You know, we spent about a third of our time figuring out what we wanted to do and if that would actually work. And if it would actually relate with people, and if people would actually understand it and be able to do it. Secondly, the marketing of the, of the event was important to us, and, and getting people engaged and engaging them as a community together. Like I said, one of the things that was interesting for us was, you can probably tell the, the success or otherwise an event like this by the amount of noise that it actually generates in the room that you're doing it in. You know, it was certainly a noisy day. You know, there was a lot of banter going on between the teams, and the interesting part was that continued on over following days, you know, and people really related back to it. There were, you know, obviously a couple of hackers that got a, a little bit of kudos out of it um, and, and had some finger pointing. But, you know, it, it was interesting to see that, that kind of engagement coming from the teams over the, course of the, over the course of the last few days. Do you have a plan? Um, I'm not talking about a, a huge Gantt chart. I'm not talking about an MS project. But I think when you have a small committed team, uh, that are putting together this, something like this, you know, understanding what everyone's bringing to the table and what they can do and when they're doing it is really important for what you're actually going to do. Don't go overboard with your implementation. You, know, you can be really ambitious in putting a, in putting a platform like this together. Um, keep it simple. Make sure you have scaffolding to, put, uh, to give people a, a really quick and simple route to immediate success um, and show them what that success looks like and then allow them to iterate over uh, the different strategies as they as they move forward in the hackathon. Uh, use source code control. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to elaborate on that one. Um, eat your own dog food. Find time to go through the challenge yourself. We, we probably didn't do enough of that. Um, do uh, do take a run through it. You can write all the tests that you want, but if you haven't given it a good thorough run through in your own world, um, and, and maybe even drag in one or two guys who might not be participating in it. Uh, but might be decent hackers and, and would find some holes. Uh, and, and one other good one is uh, dedicate you know, a little bit of time to visualization. This was an afterthought for us um, and, and it became one of the more important features of the platform. Um, it, it was something that was really helpful for teams to understand where they were at and, and how they were doing within the, within the run of the day um, and giving them that feedback really early in terms of what their strategies were and how they were working. Um, so, you know, if you can have, just have a think about something like that, it's really important for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, expect the unexpected. You're putting hackers together in a room. They're, they're going to they're gonna try something and they're going to try something that you didn't do or you didn't think of. So, so do, uh, do be ready for it. You know, uh, in, in fairness to the three guys who ran this, you know, they, uh, um, while you could see the, the huge amount of noise generating in the, uh, in the participants themselves, they were quietly around a corner, you know, not panicking, uh, but certainly typing very fast. And, and finally, have some fun. You know, like, for us, it was really important to, to get people back in, to get them used to being around each other again. You know, after the last two years of COVID, you know, we, you know, we had hard people that we hadn't shaken hands with. Um, so getting those people into a room together and, and allowing them to, to meet each other, to swap ideas, uh, to cause a little bit of noise and cause a little bit of chaos. You know, it was really important for us. And, and, and that was probably one of the bigger successes of the, of the hackathon itself. So, so with that, I will, I will leave you. Uh, thanks very much for your time, really appreciate it. And if you want to talk to us outside. <laughs>